Matt Walsh had a tweet that would be sure to outrage the TERFs that now love him if they had any sense of decency and ideological consistency. But they're fine, apparently, with partnering with somebody who says something like this so they can continue to preserve their uh, their very pure and hetero... Uh, well, not heteronormative, male gaze-determined, frankly, uh, notions of femininity. Patriarchal is probably a better word for it. So they'll be fine with partnering with this guy who calls himself, at least tongue-in-cheek, but in reality it's the truth, a fascist in his Twitter bio. He put this out there within the context of the Oppenheimer discourse. Let's see if you guys think this claim passes the smell test. Matt Walsh says, this is a good time to remember that feminism has killed far more people than the atomic bomb. It is perhaps the most destructive force in human history. Trans ideology, its offshoot, is competing for the title. Um, so this... Uh, there's a lot here uh we can get into it but how many people do you guys estimate feminism has killed so i didn't understand this at first but having you read it i i finally got it i think he means abortions like i think he's like trying to like you know hint uh, that like abort yeah yeah like what you think about that way like otherwise like you know none like the obvious answer is none but how is trans but, ideology like, competing <laughs> i i don't know it's feminizing the male population or i don't know like leading to, have to feminize a lot to catch up with abortions I, apparently or the fact that it's pre-death right because in 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 his mind then that removes you from the biological reproduction uh uh pool of oh, yeah, human the kids beings. they don't have in right yeah yeah this is some real victims of communism energy coming yeah, out of exactly. him like a lot of like i mean at least he's staying topical oppenheimer is out it's in theaters now christopher nolan three hours long you know why, why not could think about gender ideology the whole time why doesn't he actually provide this claim with facts and figures because he can't obviously because he's a religious because he doesn't know how many trans people there are <laughs> He doesn't even know, yeah, those basic facts, even though he made a made a uh, a documentary about it. But uh, like, I, I'm I'm happy that even though I mixed on Oppenheimer, honestly, I, I saw it and there's some problems with it. But it is good that we are beginning to at least talk a little bit more about the dropping of the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I, I worry that we have people like Destiny out here um, that we're actually going backwards in our understanding of that stuff because we've got a lot of edgelords saying that actually it was good and we needed to do it even though it's fucking 70 years later and that's not the like line that scholarship is taking. Well, then let's be unambiguous in our coverage of it here. Yeah. Um, we dropped two bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki when Japan had no feasible way to win the war. Uh, our air force was decimating them. They were there were a lot, some hardliners within their own government who wanted to continue to drag it out and uh, hope that uh, the enemy, the United States, the allies would tire out and that they would be able to maintain something and it would not be an unconditional surrender. Um, the United States wanted an unconditional surrender. And that was in part due to the fact that we were looking ahead towards our rivalry with the Soviet Union and we wanted to be the ones to end the war. And that is why, in part, we dropped those two weapons that incinerated school children, wiped people out. Uh, what's the estimate now? It's a little under 200,000 people killed in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in total. I mean, yeah, you never know how many estimates if there if there are. But this is from um, the Atomic Archive dot com. It says 135,000 total um, in Hiroshima and 64,000 in Nagasaki. And then the radiation poisoning and the health effects that came after it also made their effects known for. For, for decades on Japanese communities. Uh, they were civilians. These were people that were not involved in the war effort. And we did it in order to show American might looking ahead to our rivalry with the Soviet Union. Um, the Nazis had already surrendered. Japan was not going to win the war no matter what. And this was all a part of a show of force. Plus there were domestic concerns because after Pearl Harbor, 
the uh, politically in the United States, there was pressure to be as militant as possible with Japan. And that was um, deeply uh, involved in uh, intricately involved in Truman's decision in this way. Um, it's also notable that Truman was the one that made the choice as opposed to, you know, FDR, who was no longer alive. And on, well, on that, the, the, again, there's like a lot of like shit online. And if Bradley can pull this up, um, this is from a, a Roman helmet guy, a verified, uh, you know, a check uh, pays for the check on Twitter. And uh, he has this tweet. Did I not put it in there? Um, uh, that Kelsey Atherton uh, responded to. But the original, um, just put the image up first. Um, because there's like people like we just aren't good at processing this stuff. So um, the image says from Roman helmet guy, I have blood on my hands. And then it's an image of uh, Truman saying, never let that crybaby in here again. I think that's from the, the movie. That's a quote. It, yeah. And go to Kelsey Atherton's uh, clip here. Um, Kelsey writes, the main reason there wasn't a third bomb dropped on Japan is because after Nagasaki, Truman ordered a halt to all atomic bombing unless he gave direct authorization, his first affirmative order over nuclear weapons. Reports of the bomb killing children motivated this halt. So right there already, we've collapsed the actual like uh, nuance into the decision into, oh, he was a macho guy doing like the Bernie meme saying, yes, like we do want to incinerate these Total kids. Total edgelord, yeah. Exactly. And it's like, you, you pr when it's presented that way, you'll have a certain percentage of people that are like, oh yeah, we did do that. And actually Truman was based for doing that. And it's not even the way it went down. And the reason, the, uh, the, the reason also that we didn't drop that third bomb was eventually the emperor decided that it was time to surrender essentially but the like the the whole notion of what what these this kind of weaponry does in killing civilians the military justification is that well once the regular people feel what uh, their government is doing in the war that the people in power are more likely to capitulate to our demands because there will be domestic anger. That has been proven time and time again to be a false premise for warfare. The ruling elites in the United States are disconnected from what regular people are feeling. Just like the ruling elites in other countries are disconnected from what other people are feeling. And so, like, the the usage of civilian bodies of children of civilians just getting wiped out burned to death instantly does not have bearing always in a one-to-one -one way with what their government is going to do and that was the case after the dro dropping of the first bomb before the dropping of the second and so like we all i mean now we're we're uh, away from matt walsh's tweet there but like I, what we just laid out for you makes it super clear that uh yeah feminism not as deadly as the weapons of war that we that we uh that that we used in those instances yeah and that um, we're like basically learning to accept now further note on them um the let, never let that crybaby be in here comment atherton writes american prometheus reports the cry barrier uh, crybaby remark though it is unclear if it was said at the time or truman's embellishment after regardless both men expressed some regret over the bomb but truman insisted on h-bomb creation and oppenheimer worked to prevent an h-bomb's arms race but like yeah like it, also the quote doesn't come across to me like i'm some sort of base tough guy dropping bombs they came off to me as him telling Oppenheimer to shut up because he's the one who has to deal with the real trauma of ordering them like that's what it came out to how it came off to me not like he was coming off like some big tough guy but even so, like, this is why I'm sort of ambiguous about this sort of stuff being put to film anyway is because instead of a letter after the fact to Dean Acheson, it's dramatized as in the moment and guys like this say like, Oh, that's actually based. And it's, it's gross. And I, I don't feel like we're, I, I, I feel like we're going backwards on the nuclear bomb question, but maybe I'm just pessimistic. It, that's fair, fair to be so. Um, and, and just note that <laughs> these, are, these people are just fascists. I mean, when, the Nazis <laughs> spoke about what they wanted for the role for women to be. It was what uh, Kinder, Kucha, what's the third one? Uh, kitchen, children, and I'm forgetting, but yeah. um, Kircher. I, Kircher, I don't know what that means, though. Uh, children, kitchen, church. Church, right. Um, 
Yeah, I mean that's a fascist ideology, and that's the kind of thing that Matt Walsh is promoting. Yeah, like, I mean it's he's Walsh is doing the flip side of like what we do, which is like to look at these things and then try to bring a sort of like uh, progressive or preferably like labor <laughs> uh, component to it. Instead, he's just using it as a propaganda vehicle um, instead to talk about his preferred things, which is like feminism sucks. And but that's, it's just because but it's, it's, it's definitely sh- def- de- definitionally reactionary, and people should know that these conservative influencers, despite Matt Walsh making so, so, so much more money <laughs> than like I could even imagine doing this kind of job, um, you know, they, 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 they don't, they're, they're doing so um, in a way that isn't about. They're, they're not making money, basically because of uh, so many people agree with them they're making money in an artificial way because they are well funded um and what they're advocating is deeply unpopular including like reactionary returns to pre-sexual liberation times and times when women were not empowered over their own lives he's talking about feminism as a larger concept the empowerment of women I mean, let's be real here. Do you do, do you think a majority of Americans support women having equal rights? Because I do, but that's not what he advocates for. So just the the fact that he has a big audience, the fact that he has money, that does not mean that he's appealing to a majority of people. In fact, it's the opposite, and that's why he's funded to to to, to spew his retrograde view of the world. 